Japanese Whiskey Lockdown. I'm your host, Kilara Sen, aka Pink Unicorn. I know everyone has been concerned about the coronavirus news for the last few months. But this first one cannot be ignored for us at Japanese Whiskey Lockdown. The end of last month, Japanese whiskey dominated the world's whiskey media. Japanese whiskey Hakshu 25 years old was declared the world's best single malt at World's Whiskey Award. Yes, from my experience, 25 years old is the best to be single. The taste of age specializes in fruity, lightly smoked flavor, and everybody falls in love with her. In Japan, it's been more than one week since the Prime Minister declared a state of emergency. It's not lockdown, but there's no sign showing of restoration. So today, I'm making an emergency announcement. April 26th is my birthday, but under the state of emergency, I decided to voluntarily cancel and postpone it to the next year. Stay young! Hopefully, my label won't be changed from Kilala 21 year old Limited. Today, we are so happy and we are so pleased to have with us the wine and the whiskey specialist for Bonavus Hong Kong. He is the real pioneer of Asia's whiskey auctions. So, uh, let me welcome Mr. Daniel Lam! Thank you. What is whiskey auction like? We started doing whiskey auction in 2009, but mostly at that time was Scotch. I still remember back then I started to put my two, two lots of whiskey, two, two Japanese whiskey. One well, bottle is a Han Yu Kat, mm -hmm. and one bottle is a, the circle label, circle label of the Karizawa at that time. These two bottles were selling around in auction about 300 US dollars. What? But the same bottle was sold in 2015 for almost uh -huh. six times or to ten times more. How popular is Japanese whiskey? It's always a, a current. You know what I mean? When I think the Japanese whiskey was very, very popular when we started the first solo Japanese whiskey auction in 2014, August. So uh -huh. I think now 2015 was the prime time for Japanese whiskey. And then in 2016, 17, 18, the price keeps on consistent. Mm -hmm. And 2018 was very much a Scotch year. And then 2019, last year, we see that the Japanese whiskey has been coming back very strongly. For the past nine months, most of Japanese whiskey was so very, in terms of the percentage, mm -hmm. they are pretty high. It's over like 85 to 90%. So the demand is strong and the price been consistently going up. How much was the, the highest price? In the auction? Um, for Japanese, the highest price we came, we sold the Hanyu full cast set, 450,000, and then 2019 was 900,000 US dollars. What is your favorite collectible bottle? They are few. Um, in terms of the appearance, I really like the Hibiki 30 year, 35 years old. Mm -hmm. the, the blue one, I think it's the third edition. Oh, yeah. so beautiful. So, got his signature Yosuo. This is the <laughs> bottle that, uh, of course we have many other, but this is, I think, in some of the aesthetic and some of the craftsmanship and the whiskey itself is a combination of and a piece of art, I would say. I still remember when I first selling this one, it's about maybe 12,000 US in 2014. With this one, we just sold last, no, last August, we sold for like, um, 40,000 US, 45,000 okay. US, yeah. Mm. Those difference of the price are caused by the bottle or the taste or age? The scarcity and also I think that we all know that we're in this industry, collectible industry, people treat this kind of thing is more like, um, well, like you collecting a art pieces. Mm. And I, I see the whiskey category is more like, um, contemporary art. So do you have any specific Japanese whiskey which you like to drink? For me, uh, if I don't drink scotch, I would try try much as much as I can for the chichibu. Mm. Because they are experiments experimenting with many different kind of oak, like bourbon or beer card, blah blah blah. So many different oak, so many different flavor. And 
so many different releases as well. So it makes it interesting to taste them and also to collect them. Especially for audience who are watching this show now,、uh, do you have any、uh, recommendations? The gold series for the Han Yu Chichibu or this kind of thing. I mean, they are very young whiskey, but because the quantity is very small and they are come with a, a very、um, storytelling label about the、mm. history of the Japanese painting. So, and that's why people collecting it. And all this new this series, I think. As long as it's coming for a limited edition, they have a bottle number, all these thing,、mm. and it comes in a series, all、mm. these thing. Then I think it's still collectible.、Uh, Daniel San, could you tell us about the global whiskey market? The very earliest people who collecting Japanese whiskey are the European people. So there's a a big group of people who who love to collect Japanese whiskey. It's not only in Asia, but of course, I mean, there may be some limitation for U.S. allocation because of 750 and the distribution. But actually, I come across many U.S. collectors. They've been traveling a lot throughout the world, go to Japan, they buy like 10, 10 or 500 Hanyu Cast series. I would say it's very very similar, but it depends on climbing, the current、mm-hmm. weight. You know, sometimes you go a bit for the scotch. Sometimes、yeah. go a bit of old bottle, and sometimes go back to Japan. But Japan's been quite stable and consistent. In my last November auction, I have in total over three hundred bottles of Japanese whiskey. Wow! I don't have exact yeah. I don't exact exact figure how much I achieved, but the sales. Well, three point five. I think we make at least two point two million US only for Japanese whiskey. Wow. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much for sharing your knowledge about ocean and Japanese whiskey. And for people who want to know more about your activity or your ocean,、uh, where where do they、uh, where can they find out more the information? Well, they can simply visit our company's website, or yeah. yeah, and you can just or, or you can just Google it with whiskey ocean. You can find Bonhams. Yeah, easy. Welcome back to Japanese Whiskey Lockdown. Now it is week forty eight hundred, I think, of the pandemic. Many of us have followed the advice of medical professionals, panicked politicians, and that one super judgy woman from college to stay home. Yeah, staying home alone could be really lonely. Luckily, this pandemic is happening in the 21st century, not the first century. I mean, can you even imagine being in a quarantine during an ancient plague instead of Grubhub? You'd have to go out and skin a goat. Instead of podcast, you'd have to flag down the traveling minstrel and pay them to talk about this ancient Greek life. And instead of playing Animal Crossing on the couch in the living room, you'd have to actually just watch animals crossing through the living room. <laughs> With us, this amazing Japanese lady from Los Angeles today, and she is a musician and she is an actress. She's starred in the coming movie Yakuza Princess. Please、yeah. welcome Masumi. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me, and thanks to everybody for tuning in. Wow. Welcome. And、uh, you don't look so much Yakuza. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>、uh, You're so sweet, but I am pretty Yakuza-like, actually, in the movie, at least. Wow! Wow! Yeah, Sounds so yeah, savage. Yeah. <laughs> I think you know,、uh, living in an act, living in as actress in Los Angeles, also really,、uh, also not easy too. I feel like not a lot of Japanese people are seen much in America. You know, as a singer, as an actress, or just in general as an artist. You know, we're not seen that much. So I really want the world to know that there are a lot of talented. Artists from Japan, like yourself too, Kilara, and a lot of us are coming out to the world and you know doing our thing more so than before. And I really want to encourage that. The movie's title is Yakuza Princess. 
This is really yeah. catchy. <laughs> so the gist of the story of the movie is that uh, there's this Japanese girl in Brazil who doesn't know her past, and um, the movie's about how she struggles with her fate, but then at the end owns her power. So I think I think the movie is really about it. it it, it speaks about every human being who struggles in life and at some point you have to make that decision and own your power and say this is what I'm gonna do and really, you know, own it. So how many years uh, have you been in Los Angeles? Right, I've been, well I came here in 2011, um, that's when, I'm sure you know it too, but the earthquake, 2011 earthquake and the tsunami happened, the 311, that was actually the reason why I came out here after that earthquake, I kind of knew what I really wanted to do and that was to be a musician, so it's been, whoa, it's been like nine years now, time flies. Wow, so... Yes. Uh, you came to, uh, you went to America uh, because of the mm -hmm. earthquake. What, what really happened was that um, when the earthquake happened uh, in Japan in 2011, I was actually at an underground bar drinking with my friend at the time. I was drinking there and all of a sudden, you know, the earthquake started and the tables were, you know, just moving crazy. And because it was an underground bar, I had to go up all this you know, steep stairs, which none of us were able to. And because we were just getting kind of pushed back down from the earthquake and and I genuinely thought, you know, maybe this is my last moment, you know? And I think that moment when I was like, oh, what do I regret doing in my life? And that was music for me. So after that earthquake, it was sort of like an epiphany for me of what I really wanted to do. And um, two months after that, I left Japan to uh, enroll in a music school. That's why I came to Los Angeles. Could you sing for us, please? Yes, it will be my pleasure. Um, so this song that I'm going to sing, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this song because it's a cover. Um, but this song is kind of a, it's like a prayer to me because every time I sang this song, it somehow um, made me see the blessing even in the struggle, struggling times or the dark times. And in that way, I feel like it's fitting for all of us today. So. I hope you like it. Well, I heard there was a sacred chord David played to please the Lord But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lifts, baffled king composed, and hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Really, really beautiful and so inspiring. 
Thank you so much for having me and thank you everybody for listening. It was such a, it was such a pleasure being here. actually calling liquor stores essential businesses, which I find inspiring considering that exactly 100 years ago, America first enacted the prohibition. That's what I call progress, baby. But then, to enjoy nice drink, you have to know a speakeasy password, avoid eye contact, and drink in confinement. Luckily now, you just have to know the Kanda password, avoid eye contact, and drinking confinement. And since drinking Japanese whiskey makes me a better employee, now I can finally call myself workaholic. Tonight, we are pleased to have with us this beautiful lady from New York! Yes, New York! She is someone who appreciates Japanese kimono and we'd like her to share the knowledge about Japanese tradition and kimono. So please welcome Taj Zeri! Yay! So you, you said you were in Kyoto for two years. I started in Kyoto. That's where I learned a lot more about the kimonos and everything. But I was teaching English, learning a bit of Japanese, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, learning just everything about Japan. And mm -hmm. then I ended up in Tokyo. I went to a school over there called Naganuma in Ginza. Yeah, it's a very famous kimono school. I didn't realize that. <laughs> really? It was lovely. I was there for about four months and mm -hmm. uh, I learned how to put on the kimono, the obi, it was, it was very hardcore. My, my sensei was uh, very tough. <laughs> mm, I can see, I can see. What made you interested in kimono? They're just beautiful. They're an art form. Everything mm -hmm. has a story. Every piece is just so special and handmade. Wow. Collecting kimono, maybe a lot of Japanese people think it's going to be really expensive. It is expensive, but if you go to the markets in, in Kyoto, there there's Toji Temple, a couple other temples, and even in, um, in uh, Tokyo, mm -hmm. you can find markets where it's just unbelievable piles and piles of kimono. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's crazy. And mm -hmm. so I've just like collected over the time, and then I brought back to do the, the shows and it, it was really good. How did the show go? Um, I had two fashion shows mm -hmm. and it was really great. It was all my friends, everyone dressed up. Um, it was it was really beautiful. It was hard work because it was mm -hmm. my first, but it was really nice. Mm -hmm. And then the, the second fashion show I had was um, uh, Brooklyn Fashion Week. And that was amazing. Um, I, I, I was actually crying. It was so good. <laughs> So you want to have the show again? I would love to. I, I think um, now that I've had a chance to, to not be working and looking at my kimonos and I, I wear them every day, somehow figure out a way that I can sit with a friend when mm -hmm. this is all done and design some. Because mm -hmm. before I, you know, I bought them and changed them a bit, but I want to sit and design them. Yeah, you made me more interested in kimono. It was so good speaking to you. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you very much for joining us at Japanese Whiskey Lockdown. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and don't forget to love each other. Kampai!